Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. Um, if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share if you think the content will help somebody. For my existing subscribers, I just want to extend my appreciation and thank you very much. Now, well, if we're not mortgage, if we're not, if we don't have a mortgage, we're likely to either be a tenant or a landlord. Well, landlords are going to have a mortgage, so that doesn't make much sense, does it? But anyway, this um, vlog is really um, affects tenants. It's um, the a recent legislation, maybe what are we now, August. So the legislation came out, was finalised in July last month. So I wasn't sure whether or not, I did do a video on landlords before. So this really favours the tenants, um, protects the tenants. So if you're a tenant, you may find this um, useful. Okay, so I'm going to have to read it because there's a lot of, um, you know, technical stuff and I don't want to forget it. And you know me, babbling on, getting off track. So anyway, the Tenant Fees Bill was passed into law in February 2019, receiving royal assent to become the Tenants Fee Act 2019. As a result, letting fees will be banned in England from the 1st of June 2019 after already being banned in Scotland. Effectively, this ends all payments except the list permitted, which includes rent, tenancy deposit, holding deposit, default payments, fees for changes to the tenancy agreement, fees for ending a tenancy, payment for council tax, payment for utilities, payment for a TV licence and payment for communication services. So now, at least when a tenant is getting a room, all he or she needs to worry about is the five weeks rent deposit and um, the five weeks, I don't know how much week rents, but the deposit, the holding deposit and the security. So all these other things that they used to add on, that's, they're not going to be able to do that anymore. Um, they reckon it's supposed to help with the fee the fair housing. Um, so this means fees for the following will now be prohibited. Um, landlords can't, um, they can't charge for inventories, references, phone calls, postage, or anything else that takes up their time. Private sector agents will be required to join a government approved client money protection scheme, protection scheme or face a £30,000 fine. That's a hell of a lot of money. The new law will ensure that client funds, including landlords' rental payments and tenants' deposits, will be protected. It means tenancy deposits are capped and landlords and agents are banned from charging unnecessary fees which is only fair. I remember when I was looking for a place before I got this place and I wanted, I thought I might need to rent because it was going to take too long for this to be finalised. And I remember going to an agency and they were telling me it was like two months rent, then goodness knows how much deposit and this and that. And I'm like, bloody hell, going to need like over a thousand quid, nearly two thousand quid just to get a flat for a couple of months. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, where are people supposed to get that money from? I understand they need protection because in a volatile economy, which, you know, people are losing their jobs. And I mean, it was ever since, you know, people started losing their jobs and a lot of things started happening. And the agencies started feeling so they need to secure their money. So the poor tenant, was being inundated with fees. So I'm glad this has been sorted. Um, so it means the tenancy deposits can be capped and landlords and agencies are banned from charging unnecessary fees. Tenancies, tenants will see most tenancy deposits capped at five weeks rent to secure a property. This is where the total annual rent is less than 50,000. And that came into into law on the 1st of June 2019, just a couple of months ago. No fault evictions are also scrapped, so somebody can't just evict you for the hell of it. 
If you've been paying your rent and you've been behaving well and you've kept the house in order, they can't just evict you anymore because that's what they were doing. People settled in their homes when they feel like it, when they want their house back, they're just evicting people. And they're forgetting that that is that person's home. And I, I know they have to give them notice even when they evict, but it's quite unsettling. If you're in a house, you think you're going to stay there for goodness knows how long, and then you get an eviction notice. Can't be very nice. Tenants will not be charged hundreds of pounds for admin or renewal fees. Under the Act's default fee provision, landlords and agents are only able to recover reasonably incurred costs from tenants for lost keys or other security devices and must provide evidence of these costs before they can impose charges. Because a lot of them, they were charging you for the keys and security and, you know, stuff what was it? And other security devices. So, okay, keys is one, maybe a padlock or something. And then they would charge you an arm and a leg to replace it. So, whereas a key might cost you £15, cost them £15, they're like, likely to charge you £50. So now they have to show the receipt of how much they paid for the key and they're not allowed to make any profit on it, on anything that they have to replace. They can also charge a default fee in relation to late rent. So I guess if you're late in the rent, they will be able to charge a fee. Because normally, if money is going into the bank and it's going in late, the bank charges a fee. So they are permitted to charge late fees if, you're, if your rent is late. The Act ensures that tenants who have been charged unfair fees can get their money back, which is good. Trading standards of or the first tier tribunal can require landlords and agents to pay back any prohibited payment or any unlawfully retained holding deposit within 7 to 14 days. Landlords will have to deliver a fairer, better quality and more affordable private, private rental market. New legislation is being planned to abolish Section 21 evictions, bringing an end to private landlords uprooting tenants and their homes with as little as eight weeks' notice. I think landlords forget that tenants are, are renting a house, especially when they rent houses. They're renting it because it's going to be their home. And I think sometimes landlords forget that. I think what happens is, is that as far as they're concerned, they're renting a place and they're renting it for their convenience. And, you know, they might want to rent it for six months or a year and then they want their house back. But in reality, it's just like if you were living in a, if a landlord was living somewhere and they think, OK, this is my home. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to paint the room. Because some of them, they live there for two or three years. It becomes their home. And yet, so it can be quite traumatising when the landlord says, OK, you know, I need my home back. And I think they kind of forget that that is actually, that that, it, that tenant, even though they shouldn't, that tenant has made that house their home and so they you know they can't expect to live there forever but I'm sure the longest notice possible and I think that's why leases are useful because at least they know at the end of the lease they can towards the end of the lease they can verify whether or not that lease is going to be extended apparently um, I don't know if it's in force yet but landlords are going to be compelled to give a minimum, a minimum of three years lease on their properties. Like I said, I don't know if it's in force yet. So that means if you're taking somebody in your house, you have to start thinking, well, you're not going to get your house back for three years. So it's not like it's not there to do you a favour anymore kind of thing, because I think a lot of times when people rent the house is to kind of do them a favour to let them get on with something else or to help them make money. Some people don't even make money off of it, but it's supposed to help you make money. It's supposed to pay for the rent of that property and hopefully the rent of the place you're living in. But sometimes people, if they don't manage well, that's not what happens. So 
Yeah, but as long as it's paying the mortgage of the um, buy-to-let property, that should be okay. Anyway, this new legislation is a crackdown on the small minority of rogue landlords and agents who let unfit properties. This includes fixed financial penalties of up to 30,000 and banning orders possibly for life for most serious offenders. So, um, yeah, we've all heard of those homes that are absolutely abominable. I don't know if you've ever watched that program, Slum Landlords and Nightmare Tenants or whatever it is. The, where some people live is absolutely disgusting. I mean, sometimes they have rooms and they put about five or six or seven beds in there. Nowhere to put their little thing. Oh, it's absolutely awful. Hardly any water coming out. No hot water. It's illegal. And they have people living in them. It's really, really bad. So um, I didn't read this part, but you know when I was saying that they need to, um, that tenants are start, going to start getting the three-year um, lease, um, they're not, landlords are not going to be able to uproot tenants from their homes with as little as eight weeks' notice. So, you know, and that's two months. So it looks like they're going to, minimum is going to be like six months notice, which is quite reasonable. Two, two months isn't long enough to find another home and, you know, pack everything, especially when they live in houses. So um, mandatory licensing for houses of multiple occupation has been extended to improve living conditions of tenants in shared homes and tightened up the rules on smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Private tenants can also apply for a refund of up to 12 months rent if their landlord does not deal with health and safety hazards in their home. A review to assess how well the housing health and safety rating system, the system used by the local authorities to assess health and safety in residential properties works in practice, and to ensure that it's fit for purpose. So it looks like these people are going to be going around houses. Um, it's mandatory. Um, so this new legislation for Tenancy Fees Act, it makes it mandatory client money protection by which rental money held by letting agents is safeguarded against theft and fraud. Mandatory five yearly electrical installation safety inspection. So you know, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know whose houses, but I guess you'd have to be registered, wouldn't you, as a landlord, so that they could do those five yearly electrical installation safety inspections. A three-year tenancy, tenancy to get tenants to get a minimum three-year term, including a break clause of six months. Legislation being considered to help renters feel more at ease and more secure with financial security, and to put down roots in their community. So this is being considered the three years it's not yet so if you're worried about your home and you don't want to um have a tenant in there for three years you better do something about it before they make it law because once it makes it law the tenant has the right not to move and you're going to be obligated for that tenant to be in your home for three years so i'm not telling anybody to kick anybody out i'm just saying be aware Give people adequate notice if you plan to have your home or you say you, you are thinking about a year's time getting your home. Make sure you have a word with your tenant so they're not surprised. And that's all it is. It takes communication when you're dealing with other people. It's about good communication and it saves such a lot of problems when you can communicate effectively. Um, you can't charge your tenant more than £50 for a tenancy change, such as name on the contract, unless you can prove that the resulting expenditure amounted to more. So, you know, some people, they want to have a, the, the name changed on their contract and they make it look like, you know, they've had to pay this money to a lawyer when really and truly they got a little um, template at home and they just have to change the name themselves. And then they're charging um, over 50 quid for it. So, um, eco-friendly, 
minimum of an E on the energy performance certificate rating scale. This will come into effect for existing tenancy from April the 1st, 2020, and it will make breaches of this rule, renting properties with rating of F or G ratings unlawful. So you won't be able to rent any properties with F or G. You'll be incurring a fine. If you breach this rule, you'll be given a warning so you can get your property up to scratch. But if you don't do this, you will face fines and legal action, or you could do. Renting a room, at the, at the moment you're able to get tax-free profits from of 7,500, but this is going to change as a way of stopping landlords from receiving tax-free profits, intended to incentivize people to let out spare rooms. After potential new rules are in place, you'll have to be present and resident in the property for at least some time during the letting period to get this money tax-free. This is known as a shared occupancy clause. So it looks like you will be able to get that um, tax-free profit, but you have to spend some time in the house to do it. You can't just claim it willy-nilly. Um, not live there and claim it, I should say. Uh, mortgage interest tax relief until 2017. Landlords could deduct their mortgage interest payments from their rental income, reducing the amount of income that would be taxed. The government has decided to change this rule and is phasing in a reduction in the amount of interest that can be used to offset income tax. In the current 2018-2019 tax year, so this is last year, last tax year, Oh no, that is this tax year. Um, you can set 50% of your interest against your rental income. This reduces to 25% in 2019 to 2020 tax year and will disappear completely from April 2020. Let me read that again. In the current 2018-2019 tax year, you can set 50% of your interest against your rental income. This reduces to 25% in 2019-2020 and will disappear completely from April 2020. Okay. From this point, landlords will receive a tax credit calculated at 20% of your mortgage interest. Comparing landlord's insurance. I wonder if you really need this. Well, it's nearly finished, so let me just read it. Um, buying property to let can be a good way to secure a regular income. However, you should remember that being landlord is a considerable responsibility. You're in charge of maintaining the property, which means making sure it is livable condition, as well as keeping it safe and green. You're also required to provide a number of services for your tenants and together all of these can add up. Therefore, it's worthwhile taking out a landlord insurance policy that covers you for all the possible costs you might face, ranging from property maintenance and repairs to rent cover and possible legal fees. If you shop around for legal for different policies, you may be able to compare them by a level of coverage. They provide the premium costs and any other fees included. However, you should remember that a cheaper price isn't always ideal. It's better to look for a policy that offers adequate cover for everything you need. Otherwise, you might end up over-insured and paying too much or under-insured and unable to claim. New landlord rules have come into force this week. Uh, that's, that's not this week. Um, this is the July part. Um, allowing tenants to sue if their home has mould, is too hot or too cold, or if there's noise or light issues. Can you imagine if you've got a nightmare um, tenant in every little thing, in just a bar? You know what I mean? It's like, that can be, I mean, I don't believe that there should be any mould. I believe that the houses should have radiators, it should be warm, it should be comfortable. I mean, yeah, but I, I don't see how a landlord can be responsible for noise or light issues. I don't understand. I mean, you're going to get a bulb, aren't you, for the light issues? 
and the noise. I mean, if the noise isn't in the house, how can the landlord be responsible for that? But that's what it says. The Homes Fitness for Human Habitation Act allows unhappy tenants to go to court if their accommodation is not well maintained. Reasons for escalating complaints to the court include if the home is too hot or too cold, if there is damp or asbestos, I can understand that, got a stiff neck, or if there is noise or lighting issues. Renters lived in homes deemed unfit for living have now a right to head to the court. Tenants can take action for the following. Repairs, stability, damp, internal arrangement, natural lighting. So wouldn't you know if there's natural lighting before you move in? I mean, surely if there's not natural lighting, you, you should know that. That shouldn't be on there, really. I think that is a bit off. Ventilation, water supply, drainage and sanitary conveniences. Facilities for preparation and cooking of food and for disposal of wastewater. Hazards under the housing health and safety rating system. So, yeah, I agree with most of them. I mean, of course, the house has to be in good order and stable and, you know, there shouldn't be damp. But natural lighting, that's a bit, you would know whether the house had natural lighting when you went to see it. You went to see it in the dark and they always say, never go to look at a property in the dark because it always looks romantic. Make sure you go in the light of day when, you know, you can see everything. Um, crucially, renters do not have to go to their local council with complaints and can now head straight to the court. Of course, that's going to cost you money. Landlords, and it takes out the middleman. Landlords may not have only to take action regarding hazard, but they may also have to make pay tenants damage compensation. However, landlords will not have to rebuild homes destroyed by damaged or damaged by fire, floods or other natural occurrences. There are currently almost one million rented homes with hazards that pose a serious risk to health and safety. Do you remember the, ha the Home Office? Apparently, they wouldn't get by on this, on this renter's thing. They'd definitely have to do something. Those asylum seekers would have them, they'd be going to court. <laughs> Can you imagine? A set of asylum seekers taking them to court because the house is not fit for purpose. That would be dread. Wouldn't that make the news? My goodness. Anyway, um, this affects around 2.5 million people who all benefit from this landmark change in the law. Landlords have faced tough new measures over the past 12 months, including new taxation. Osborne introduced a 3% a stamp duty surcharge on a second home purchases and cut the wear and tear allowance. He also slashed higher rate tax relief on mortgage interest repayments. So the landlords, you know, they're getting you left, right and centre, you know, for a lot of people, um, buying to let or, yeah, buy to let was the way to make money and it was really um, a good way to make money if you could afford um, having more than one properties. But now you have to make sure that if you are renting a property, it is decent, well maintained, clean, and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you can find yourself up the court and being sued by an angry tenant and fined £30,000. So that's all your profit gone down the drain. So just be careful and follow the rules of the book. Bye-bye.